Hello students, our today's topic is Uniform Circular Motion. In this video, we are going to discuss few characteristics of Uniform Circular Motion. For that, let's take an example of a satellite revolving around the Earth. In a uniform circular motion, the object covers equal distance in equal interval of time. Therefore, the satellite covers distance delta s in equal interval of time. Let time of revolution is equal to t in second. Therefore, in a periodic time t, the satellite covers distance equal to circumference of the orbit. Therefore, distance covered by the satellite is equal to 2 pi r. From this, we can write the speed of a satellite v is equal to 2 pi r divided by t, which is constant. That is, distance covered by the satellite per second is constant. As the distance covered by the satellite per second is constant, then the distance covered by the satellite in a finite time interval is also constant. From this, we can write average speed is equal to instantaneous speed. From this, we can say, student, the motion of an object with a constant speed along the circumference of a circle is called uniform circular motion. Remember, student, here the speed specifies average as well as the instantaneous speed. Now, student, let's specify the position of a satellite during its motion. For that, we need to consider radius vector. These are the different radius vector indicating the position of the satellite during its motion. We already discussed, student, in a uniform circular motion, equal distance covered in equal interval of time. Therefore, the arc length Delta S describes equal angle at the center of the circle in equal interval of time. Let delta theta is the angle described by arc length in equal interval of time. In the periodic time t, the angle described is 2 pi radian, that is 360 degree. Therefore, from this we can write the formula for the angular speed which is equal to 2 pi by t equal to constant. That is, the angle described by the satellite per second is constant. As the, as the angle described by the satellite per second is a constant, then the angle described by the satellite for the finite time interval is also constant. But we know student for the finite time interval the angular displacement is a scalar quantity. So it is a vector quantity only when the angle describes for the small interval of time. Therefore, the average angular speed is equal to instantaneous angular velocity because the motion is uniform circular motion in which equal angle get pressed in equal interval of time. So from this we can say student in a uniform circular motion angular speed or angular velocity is constant. As there is no change in the angular velocity student, there is no acceleration due to angular velocity. Therefore, the angular acceleration which is denoted with the alpha equal to d omega by dt is equal to zero. Again, I repeat student, in uniform circular motion, there is no change in the angular velocity and that's why the angular acceleration is zero. In a circular motion, the magnitude of radius vector is constant, but its direction changes. This change in the direction gives the vector delta r. Here you can see student, the change in the direction of a radius vector r1 and r2 is given by the vector delta r1. Similarly, I can draw other vectors. This rate of change of delta r, that is a change in the direction of a radius vector, gives velocity. The average velocity is equal to vector delta r divided by delta t. 
To find instantaneous velocity of the satellite, we have to take limit of average velocity as the delta t tends to zero, which is equal to vector dr by dt. At the given instant, the instantaneous velocity has a tangential direction. Here, the vector v1 represents instantaneous velocity at that point. Similarly, I can draw other. The rate of change of direction of velocity is called radial acceleration, as it is directed along the radius towards the center. But we know student in uniform circular motion, the rate of change of direction of velocity is constant, that is radial acceleration is constant. Therefore, the formula for the radial acceleration a suffix r is equal to vector dv by dt which is constant. Here in the diagram you can see student the direction of acceleration is along radius towards the center. So I can draw all this direction of radial acceleration. Net acceleration in uniform circular motion. Net acceleration in uniform circular motion is a radial acceleration. As we already discussed student, even though there is angular displacement and angular velocity in a uniform circular motion, but the angular velocity is constant and that's why the angular acceleration is zero. So only acceleration present in the case of uniform circular motion is the radial acceleration. And that's why we mention it over here, a net that is net acceleration is equal to radial acceleration. This radial acceleration gives centripetal force. Formula for that, F is equal to mass into radial acceleration. Centripetal force is a constant and its direction is same as that centripetal acceleration. As the direction of a centripetal acceleration and centripetal force is same, I can mention the force over here whose direction is along radius towards the center. Now let's discuss about work done by the centripetal force. Why? Because only force present in the uniform circular motion is a centripetal force. There is no other force is present because there is only acceleration present in uniform circular motion is a radial acceleration or centripetal acceleration. So work done by only the centripetal acceleration that we have to consider in case of a uniform circular motion. Work done by the centripetal force in uniform circular motion is zero because centripetal force is a perpendicular to velocity and hence to the displacement. We know student formula for the work which is equal to force into displacement. Work is the dot product of a force and displacement. Therefore, work is equal to F into dr into cos theta, where the theta is the angle between the force and displacement. But here you can observe student the displacement whose direction is the same as that of a velocity direction and that of the force direction, both are perpendicular to each other. Here note down student, the work done is not zero because of force is equal to zero or displacement is equal to zero. The work is zero because the angle between the force and displacement is 90 degree. Most of the students misunderstand that the work done in a uniform circular motion is zero because the displacement is equal to zero. But it is not so student. Work done is zero because the angle between the force and displacement is 90 degree. So student, as we see in the diagram, at every instant of time, acceleration and that of a displacement or velocity, both are perpendicular to each other in the uniform circular motion. So the work done is zero for every instant of time in uniform circular motion. We know the formula for the work energy theorem. Work is equal to change in the kinetic energy, but here, we can write change in kinetic energy is equal to zero. We know student kinetic energy is equal to half into m into v square, where the v is represents speed of the object. As you can see student, work done is equal to zero 
and that's why change in kinetic energy that is change in the speed of the object is zero so whatever the force is act on the object is only responsible for the change in the direction of the object therefore for the uniform circular motion the condition is that your acceleration always have to be perpendicular to the direction of motion if it is not possible in that case your work done is not zero you will have some amount of a work done that some amount of a work done change kinetic energy of the object in turns it change the speed of the object if the, the if there is a change in the speed of object the motion will not remain longer as a uniform circular motion hope you understand the concept thank you student do like share and watch my videos